Why law? Why'd you get into law? Well, I always had, I always knew I wanted to be a lawyer. I know that sounds like, oh, I always knew, but I really did always know. In fact, when I was 16, a sophomore in high school, uh, I had to write a letter to myself that my teacher would then uh, mail to us when we were 21, five years later. And in there it said, you know, I'll be graduating from Texas A&M University because that's where my older sister went and that's where I wanted to go. I'll be uh, applying to law schools and dating a boy I liked. So two of the three happened. <laughs> I ended up not dating the boy that I wanted to date at the time, but I did indeed. I was at a and and I was applying to law schools. So I've always been very verbal. I like to read and talk. So that's never been something that inhibited me from being able to, I, I've never been too shy about uh, speaking in crowds, that's not been my thing. So it was a good fit for me. But I also think that, you know, I've always kind of cheered for the underdog. And that's my sweet spot as a lawyer. When somebody can't stand up for themselves, I love standing up for them. Yeah. So uh, some really good nuggets in there already. <laughs> One, you started setting your vision and your intention so mm -hmm. early, okay? Yep. Bravo for that teacher that understood how staking a claim on your vision and imagining what you want can absolutely create it. And then good good on you for being, you know, young and clear. I don't know that a lot of, yeah, I don't know that a lot of people are that clear when they're that young. Do you think you've always had are you clear in other areas of your life or was it just in this one area that you, you, you have that level of clarity for yourself? That is a good question. Um, that is something that I would say has evolved since I've been working with you. So that's a good, uh, the realization, and I'm going to receive this about myself, the realization that I've always been that way, but I didn't know I was always that way. So I guess the question, the answer to your question is, yes, I've always been that way, but I never gave myself credit and I didn't know I was that way until I started working. Okay, great. I love that. And, and my personal perspective is that there's always room for more clarity, that, oh, yeah. that you don't stop iterating on the level of clarity that you have on, on where you're going, what you want to create, what your truth is, what your, where your power lies, where, where your genius lies. So I, I think that's really great. Let's go back to one thing that you said uh, at the very beginning, which is that you've you've always used your voice. Like you knew you weren't afraid of speaking. You weren't afraid of using your voice. And you had some cognizance of your own power and that you could use it to protect, really, defend, really, the, the underdog. Is that connected to anything else? Did you do that in your childhood growing up? Yes. And, and, and this is something that I've always had in me. And it's just now, as we say, in spirit of wealth, these are just now downloads that I'm having. I'm starting to just now connect all the dots. It's all making sense now. When I was as young as third grade, this is my first memory of something like this happening. I've always had either advisors, teachers, professors, authority figures, adults in my life, pull me aside and say, so Laura, you're a leader. And so would you be willing to do this? Because people will listen to you and you and you make them comfortable. And if you do that, then that'll really help the class. What or what uh, example? In the fifth grade, there was a, um, a little girl who came. She was um, new. She was from the Philippines. And she was very shy and very introverted. And my teacher, Mrs. Ray, pull, pulled me aside and said, Laura, I had a conversation with that. You know, you're a leader in the classroom. You make people feel comfortable. Will you 
reach out to her and, and befriend her. And I was like, absolutely. Yes. But I also distinctly remember thinking, I'm a leader? Like, people listen to me? Like, what do you... Okay. Like, I didn't know I had that. And then again, I can give you multiple examples of that having happened to me in my life. People calling me forward as a leader, seeing something in me that I didn't accept. And I just started accepting it in there. <laughs> And I'm 45. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So it's been a, it's been a journey. So okay. so t- talk to me a little bit about what has allowed you to accept it, to to really own that power of, of leadership. What has helped me to accept that? Understanding my my self worth and my gifts, and accepting that that is a gift, and that I'm worthy of those gifts, and that. I can use that that's my superpower and I accept it and I'll be damned if I'm not going to walk that road because I know that I can make a difference in people's lives. 